QuickBooks Online 2024 Customize Report. Get ready because we're going to Bookkeeping Cloud 9 with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side. And then within the favorites, we're going to right-click on that balance sheet report. Open in new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss. Open in new tab. Go up to that middle tab we just opened. Close up the hamburger. There's our balance sheet. Let's do a range change up top. Going from 010123 tap 123, that's January to December 2023. Run it to refresh it. Tab into the right, closing the hand boogie, range into the change in 010123 tab 123123, and run it to refresh it. Let's go back on over to the balance sheet. This is where our point of focus has been. And we talked last time about the components of the balance sheet, the comparison between the balance sheet and the income statement between our two major reports. And we talked about some of the formatting items, the formatting and customized items that are in this gray area up top, as well as this header section here. Now we wanna go into the customized settings further into these customized settings. Some of the information in here will be duplicated and I think the idea from QuickBooks is they had, they're kind of not knowing which, how much stuff they want within the customize and how much stuff they want in this ribbon area. So some of it is basically duplicated. They might change it over time. That's why we update the course from time to time so that we have the up-to-date locations of all these little functions. But typically the functions will remain the same. They might just change exactly the like the formatting and where they are located. So let's go into the customization up top. We have the customization categories. If I close all of the triangles, we've got the general. We've got the rows and columns. We've got the filters. We've got the headers and footers. Let's start off with the top one, the general information. So we have the periods. Note that this period information is the exact same thing that we saw over here in a prior presentation. Therefore, most likely, you're going to be going into that stuff on this side and not going into the customized reports to get there. And then we got the accounting method. Once again, that was something that was over here as well. So you have that toggle that they put over here now with the uh, accounting method. I'm recommending, remember, to use the accrual method. I went into a big long rant on it last time as to why that's the case. So if you have, if you're thinking I want to click over to the cash method over here, just go into my rant before and, and then think about it and see if that uh, is the thing you want to do in the prior presentation. But in any case, we're then going to the number formatting. So this is new stuff. We've got the divide by 1000 without cents, uh, except zero amounts, uh, negative numbers and show in red. So let's go through these one at a time. We're gonna say first divide by 1000. Now, most of the time, small reports or companies might not do this, but if you have a large numbers, then uh, dividing by 1000 is a way to take off some zeros to round basically. So if we click that one off, we're gonna say boom, and then it rounds it out to uh, the thousand. So if I go in to my trusty calculator here, and we were to say that we had 1.2 times 1,000. That's where that's uh, the amount here. So if I go back up top again, and we say I'm going to go back up top to my customization, and then if I bring it back off, we were at uh, the 1201, right? So it rounds it uh, to the thousands. Now if I take if I do that here and I say divide by a thousand and we want to have the without sense, then it's going to take off the decimal. So now it takes off the decimal that wasn't really sense here. That was the rounded, <laughs> that was the rounded amount here, right? So you, pro you probably possibly want the decimal maybe if you're rounding there, but th those are the rounding one. Now, if I bring it back to where we were, here's where we were. 
and now I have the pennies here. So what if I want to round it to the pennies? I just want to take off the pennies. I'm not going to divide by a thousand, just want to take off the pennies. Well, that's the cents. So we don't want cents. We want the report to make sense, but not have pennies. That's what we're talking about. So that's a little bit cleaner. Obviously, the question would be, is is the financial statement reports, are they still, uh, when you take off or round certain items, do you have what you need for decision-making purposes? Usually for external reporting, taking off the pennies is fine. For the internal reports, I like to have the pennies on there because I want to see the exact numbers when I do my data input information. So I would usually take off the pennies for external reporting, possibly divide if I'm looking with, working with large numbers. Then we have the accept zero amount. This is checked off by default, and that's probably the way that we want to keep it. Let's run the report just to see what that is doing. If I go down here, for example, to this truck account, you can see it has a parent subsidiary account relationship. Let's go back to the first tab just to get an idea of what that means. If I go into the transactions and then go into my chart of accounts, when we set up our accounts, we could set them up so that we have a parent type of account and then put other accounts below it. So we have this subsidiary relationship. That's what's creating that particular dropdown. When we do that, oftentimes we don't want to actually post anything to this truck account, but instead just use it to give us the dropdown and then post to the accounts below it. So you can see that nothing over here is posted to the truck account and it didn't put a zero which is nice because the zero would be a little bit messy right so instead it has to drop down and here's the amount here and then it gives us the total uh below also down below in retained earnings you can see nothing's in retained earnings but it still keeps retained earnings because that's like a permanent account and it doesn't put a, it didn't put a zero there if i go back up top and customize it and then uncheck that one you can see that in this uh, subsidiary truck account, there it puts the zero, which is a little bit ugly, right? It's not as nice. And then it puts it here. Now, if you want to remove the zeros that don't have anything in there, remember that was here where you can say, I want to have uh, n not active accounts that had activity in them, but non-zero accounts. So that'll remove all the accounts that have zeros in them. So, so usually if you want to remove the zeros, you'll do this. And usually by default, you'll just keep this one checked off and just don't mess with that one typically. So then let's go to the next one. We're going to say rows and columns. So we have the totals, uh, the days, uh, the months. And this is all stuff that we saw over here. Same exact drop down that we had over here. It's just repeated. Show non-zero amounts. This is the same exact drop down that I just showed you over here so once again you probably will not go into the rows and columns section because you could do that right at the header of 